In this video, I'm going to be making an implant model using an Odontofix implant analog. So we have a scan of the scan body in, in position, and then I'm going to move it into another layer to new collection, call it scan body. It is a good idea to always manage your objects and your scene. I'm going to be placing the other model into a new collection called model. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be hiding the model by clicking on this icon over here. Then I'm going to go to the component module and I'm going to go to the Odontofix Serona and we're going to be choosing a Strauman bone level and the dimension of the analog 6.5 millimeter. And we're going to append this into the scene. Now without moving this component I'll leave it exactly in the center of the scene where where it has been imported. We can hide the scan body as well. And then we're going to go into transparent mode and always select the scan body first and then using the B key we can select the rest. So the first one selected and all the other ones follow that. Then click link assembly. This will link them and it will put the components into special collections. The scan body will turn orange. This means now that the scan body has been linked and we can now move it wherever we like. The reason why we don't move it is because the script will recognize the top of the analog and the bottom and the sides of the analog. Next, we're going to go to the alignment add-on. Here, we can view the, the model with a scan again, so that we can use the ICP alignment tool to position it in place. So the first thing I want to do is I want to see the mesh structure of our analog. Now, this is not a very suitable mesh structure um, and this depends on the manufacturer and what how the, the geometry has been um, made for their alignment. So we're going to go up to the voxel remesh and note it has a hole in it as well so this will close the hole and then it has remeshed the object. The default value 0 0.08, which seems relatively good to be using this mesh, and then click on apply. You can change this to make it finer if you wish, but we um, it's not necessary to make it that fine. Then click on apply. Next, we're going to name this moving we're going to name this destination. Then we can move them together. I will be making this into a wireframe so we can see right through it. So from the top, use the G key and the R key. And by the way, we can hide this specific component in the component module we can click on hide components. This makes it all way easier so that we can get a good view. Alt B to get a cross section using the G key and the R key and making sure you've got it properly aligned. There's a little notch on the one side so we have to rotate it a little bit. So using the R key, rotate it, and the G key to bring them into position. So 
So once you've got them closely aligned, we will perform the ICP algorithm. But before then, we need to color the object. So click on color moving. Use the C key. Always remember we're working with X, Y, Z axes. It's no use only um, coloring the cylinder because it will rotate within the cylinder. So we need adequate anti-rotation and we need a stopping point on the Z axis. So this is very important. Apply. And we're now going to color the moving, the destination. And we can sort of see through where we have colored the underlying object as well. That should do it. Then we're going to click on Apply. And we're going to start tracking. Make sure the Vertex Select button is checked. We could actually set this to 75. Stop tracking. Select both. Perform ICP. Then just check that you've got a good connection. And you'll never get an exact 100% um, overlap because the scan itself is not as accurate as the scan body. So the finer your scanner is, the better you're going to get an alignment. Yeah, okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click on confirm and then we're going to continue making our model. Alt B to exit. Now that we've aligned it, we can hide the scan body we don't the scan of the scan but we don't need that anymore and we're going to um, view our model the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go to the component for in the second menu so we're going to select the model select model being cut then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the analog because it is transparent Select an edit analog. We're going to click on top. Use a blue arrow and move it through the model. Please do not click on apply cut. Because this specific object needs to have an offset. So note we are in edit mode. Tab to get out of it. And we're going to we can see this cutting object. We need to offset this object. These tools are merely for analog sleeves, the component sleeves, um, which do not need to be offset. So we're going to go into the model designer. And we're going to go to the insert menu. Click on the object, name object being cut. Then click on your, your insert, select insert, and then this will have given it an offset of 0 0.1. And you're going to need to experiment with your printer, but this is our default. Click on apply this offset. Next what we're going to do is we can set the voxel mesh. So the finer it is, the more accurate it's going to be. I'm going to set this to 0 0.05 to make it very dense. And then we're going to click on Remesh and then Cut Hole. This will leave a cavity in the, in the model. Now we have our cutting tool there. We know longer need to see this cutting tool. Uh, this is called hole cutter. We can hide this and our scan body we do not need anymore either. We can hide this and we've got our analog in position. So in a cross section 
we're going to view this in cross section. And we can see that we've got a 0.1 millimeter little gap, an offset gap to put our analog into the model. I'll P to exit, and then you may then just print this model. If you've got the gum designer, you can still create a bit of gum. Thanks for watching.